Welcome to our latest video, the tax pitfalls of being a global citizen. Let's be honest, being a global citizen is awesome. Who doesn't like spending time in different countries, experiencing different cultures, and enjoying various cuisines and wines from all over the world? High net worth individuals have long had this privilege and often have residences in multiple countries. The pandemic expanded this privilege to a whole new demographic, digital nomads those who work remotely as they move around and spend time in different parts of the world. While this sounds great, there are tax risks that many unexpectedly learn the hard way. The main risk is that you could inadvertently become a tax resident of a country where you're spending time and become liable for tax there. In this video, I'm gonna explain the risks of working and spending time in different countries and what you can do to avoid becoming tax resident in a country and becoming liable for taxes there. Most people mistakenly believe that as long as they spend less than six months in a country, they won't become a tax resident. This is not correct. Pretty standard rule that spending more than six months in a country will result in you becoming a tax resident each country has their own unique residency rules. Some countries, for example, have rules that state if you have a home available to you there and use it even for one day that you're a tax resident. This obviously makes having a vacation home in such a country risky. Often you're better off renting or staying in a hotel in such a country. But if you are renting, you need to make sure that you rent on a short-term basis and preferably not always the same place, or this could be viewed as a residence. Another risk is source of income risk. Some countries have rules stating that income earned while in country is subject to income tax there. So if, for example, you're a consultant, you're spending time in such a country and performing work there, even if you aren't a tax resident, the consulting income you earn while there could be subject to income tax there. And yet another risk is inadvertently creating a permanent establishment of a company in the country where you're spending time. A permanent establishment arises when a company from one country does business in another country. This generally happens when a company has personnel or premises in another country. You would be that personnel and the place where you're spending time could be considered the premises. For example, if a company has a permanent establishment in a country, generally income associated with that permanent establishment is subject to tax there. So say, for example, you're a director of a company in country A, but are spending time and working in country B, performing your director duties there. It's highly likely that you've created a permanent establishment of that company from country A in country B, and any income attributed to that permanent establishment will be taxable there. What can you do? You need to make sure that you understand the tax residency rules in each country where you're spending time. You also need to make sure that you understand the source of income rules and the permanent establishment rules. Only then can you plan accordingly. It's also important to keep in mind that there may be a tax treaty between your country of official residence and the country where you're planning on spending time and potentially doing work that alters the default treatment for tax residency source of income and permanent establishment. For example, most tax treaties have what are called treaty tiebreaker provisions that determine in which of the two countries you would be a tax resident. So if, for example, you would otherwise be a dual tax resident of both countries, the treaty tiebreaker provisions go through a series of tests to determine of which one of the two countries you're actually a tax resident. They generally look something like this. In which country do you have a permanent home? If you have a permanent home in both countries, where is the center of your vital interest? When the center of vital interest can't be determined, you're a resident of the country where you habitually live. If you do not habitually live in either country or you habitually live in both countries, you're a resident in the country of which you're a national or a citizen. If you're a national of both countries, then the competent authorities of both countries must figure out the dispute to determine where you're a tax resident. The goal of this treaty tiebreaker is to avoid people being dual tax resident and subject to double taxation. Tax treaties generally would allow you to spend more time in a treaty partner country without becoming tax resident. Tax treaties also generally usually contain provisions that determine the source of income and define exactly what is and what is not a permanent establishment. Generally, these rules make it harder for the country where you're spending time to tax income earned while there and raises the bar for creating a permanent establishment there. The point I'm trying to make is that it's super important to understand the tax residency rules 
source of income rules, and permanent establishment rules of the country where you're spending time and working. It's also important to understand how any applicable tax treaties may modify those default rules. You don't want to get stuck with unexpected taxes and the associated penalties and interest. 